Greetings, booktubers. Welcome back to Grammaticus Books. What we got online for you here today is Celebrity Artist Deathmatch. Frank Frazetta versus Boris Vallejo. Going to throw him into the octagon and see which one comes out on top. Um, so before we start, a little bit of disclaimer. Neither one of these artists is bad. I'm not saying that at all. This is just sort of a fun little uh, exercise to see which one uh, I think is best. I, I have a definite opinion on which one of these guys that, that I like that I think is best. And I'll tell you why. I'll go through the pros and cons of both. And at the end, we'll crown a winner. Um, and we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it as well. If you've got an opinion on it, please throw it into the uh, comments section. I do read and try to get back to uh, all the comments. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take Boris Vallejo, uh, fabulous cover artist, fantasy and science fiction cover artist, and Frank Frazetta, probably the two biggest names in fantasy and science fiction book cover art that are out there. Um, absolutely, I would say that they are the two giants in the field. Both of them are geniuses. Both of them are fantastic. There's no wrong answer in this thing. Um, but I do have an opinion on which one I think is better. So the way I'm going to measure it is we're going to look at the tangibles real quick. I'll take a look at light and shade, color, volume, light sources, uh, anatomy, musculature, composition, skin tones, things along those lines. And then we'll take a look at some of the intangibles as well, such as mood, imagination, um, energy, and uh, just you know how well they're able to evoke a scene. And we'll stack them all up and we'll see which one that we think is better. And we're gonna start it off with Boris. Boris Vallejo. And we're gonna do the pros of Boris Vallejo. Boris is technically just a superior artist. His mastery of the human anatomy, there's Conan of Aquilonia, is just superb. He's fantastic. He knows anatomy better than almost anybody. And then he augments that with his colors and his skin tones and his lights, his lighting, that he just brings his figures to life, to life in a way that there are very few artists that can compare to it. He's able to give them life and volume by use of different shading with his colors and different lighting on the skin tones that just creates a realism that jumps off the page compared with his, along with his knowledge of uh, musculature. And that's really his strengths, uh, is creating these really realistic looking figures that have this wonderful skin tone and wonderful color that he puts into his paintings that make them just leap off the page uh, like they're alive. And one of my favorites of his is right here, Conan the Barbarian number nine. Savage Sword, not Conan the Barbarian, this is Savage Sword number nine. I mean, just look at that cover. Look at Conan on there. This is, I think, one of his um, better, more superior paintings that he's done. The composition is wonderful as well. You've got Conan right here in a central figure. You've got a wonderfully rendered uh, female over here below. And then you've got this evil wizard and then the red cape coming down, drawing your eye into Conan. Conan comes back up. He's looking here to the wizard, gets you going around. You've got a highlight up here. And then you've got wizards fading off in the distance, giving you a good background um, to it with dark up top, dark blue into lighter blue to highlight this scene. And it's just superb. That is fantastic stuff. Just sort of an aside, this is Boris on Savage Sword of Conan number one. And uh, it's still, I, I, this isn't a hit on Boris. It's just, man, this is so much primitive, so much more primitive the number nine, that the difference between this painting in terms of his um, his skill level and uh, painting number nine is just extraordinary. It looks like two different artists did this. I still love this. I mean, it, it just sets a great mood. But look at look at uh, Red Sonia in Savage Sword number one. She's really badly done. I mean, that's that's almost like a high school level uh, rendering of uh, Red Sonia over there versus this wonderfully crafted female on uh, issue number nine. There's almost, it almost looks like two separate artists. But anyway, that's not a, that's not a hit on Boris. That's just to show how, how much he developed in such a short period of time into an excellent artist. So next one up then is gonna be Frazetta. It's what are Frazetta's strengths? Frazetta's strengths are he could really bring mass to his subjects, even though his musculature wasn't as realistic as Boris's. And his ability to take the books and then translate it into something that just transported you there with his imagination 
was hands down, bar none, the, the top in the field. And then his ability to portray action, violence, and savagery is just without parallel. That one right there, just, you've got a muscular guy, but he doesn't look like he lives in a gym. Like he got the muscles from working out eight hours a day, five days a week. And there's, there's a brutal violence and savagery just simmering under the surface in there. And it's just a, a superior painting. Here you've got the action with rogues in the house, Conan attacking Thack. And one of my all-time favorites, the Frost Giant's Daughter, with kind of a rare use of bright colors by Frazetta. And you've got just wonderful action with the Frost Giants rising up above, offset with sort of a lateral position or a horizontal position with Conan. And then you've got the giant iceberg mountain in the back, kind of grounding it and giving it a gravity. Wonderful stuff. Here's one where you don't have a huge central figure of a barbarian, but you just have this wonderful scene of action with this huge troll in motion coming down. And you've got Kane from Carl Edward Wagner there, ready to try to spear it through the heart. And he's all angles. The troll that's coming at him is all rounded in talons and fangs. And the composition on this is just superb. And when you put that into a large format, Frazetta is just without parallel. There's that, I think that's Conan the Usurper, the large format version of it. Wonderful stuff. You can just see, feel the action, the snake getting ready to strike, Conan straining at the chains. And of course, if you're going to talk pros of uh, Frank Frazetta, you have to talk the Death Dealer. I mean, that painting alone right there is enough to make you a legend. If that was all he did, Frank Frazetta would still be a legend of fantasy art. So those are the strengths. So what are the weaknesses of Boris then? Well, in my opinion, the weaknesses of Boris is that Boris, when he would do his paintings, what he typically did is he would go to the gym. He worked out at a gym and he would find athletic models and bodybuilders. And then he would pay them to be models to come into a studio. He would pose them and then he would paint them onto his painting, onto his canvas and then fill in the backgrounds afterward. That was his technique. But the thing is, is if you're posing models, they have to be in that position for a fairly long amount of time in order for him to paint them. So he can't put them into off balance or full action poses. And consequently, I think his paintings become a little stiff because of that. Also what that does is it also separates the background from the figures because he's doing the figures and then he fills in the background afterwards. And for me, it creates like a little bit of a disconnect. So you have kind of stiff posing that pulls a little bit of the life out of it. And then you have a disconnected background, almost like you're watching a Disney Star Wars film where you've got the actors filmed here and then behind them, all the CGI, it's beautiful CGI going on, but the actors don't seem to be in the CGI. Like you're, like you're watching a bad Marvel Star Wars. And again, it's wonderfully rendered and everything, but the action, it's like the you're in the pause before the action. Like that moment before the violence is actually about to start. As versus Frazetta where the action has already started. Again, wonderful skin tones, but a bit stiff. And the hair on here is beautifully rendered. It's vibrant, it's voluptuous, but it looks like she just stepped out of a salon because she probably did. Because <laughs> these aren't, these aren't uh, people who grew up living outdoors all their life in a uh, life or death struggle every single day. There's people who you just took out of the gym. And, and that's what I see when I look up there. I see somebody who has been working out in a gym um, who I used as a model and then put a background behind it. So that's, that's my critique of Boris. So what's my critique of uh, Frank Frazetta? Well, <clears throat> for Frazetta, his musculature, it's not as accurate or as realistic as Boris Vallejo. His skin tones, he doesn't have the mastery of color that uh, Boris has. So his skin tones don't make it quite as vibrant. And it's not as completely accurate in terms of his 
mastery of the of the musculature as Boris has. But it's still it's his own style. That's why he's doing it that way. And also with um, Frank Frazetta, one of the big critiques is is that his colors are a little bland, a little monochromatic. They tend towards the browns and the tans. <clears throat> oh, this one has a bright red in it. But like right here, that there's not a lot of color in a lot of his compositions. And that a lot of his compositions are centrally located, which isn't necessarily a good thing all the time. When you're doing a book, though, you do want to, and you're, you're designing a book cover, you want a central composition. But again, you've got a little bit of a monochromatic color tone going on here. And also that his females are not <clears throat> standard beauty females, meaning that Frank went in to, for the more traditional, uh, the more classical style of beauty where females were voluptuous, that they were more rounded. And I'll get you an example of that. <clears throat> like here. This lady, she's a beautiful lady, but she doesn't look like an athlete. She doesn't have a modern... Uh, style of beauty like you would see in a Boris painting where you have got bodybuilders, female bodybuilders and female athletes that he's using for his models. Instead, he's going to use... Yeah, that's not a good one. Let's get a good one here. He's going to use a more classical um, figure, figure for, his, uh, for his females. And that's what he likes is a more voluptuous look to it. So we got the pros, we got the cons. Which one is the winner? And I'm going to tell you right now, for me, hands down, without question, it's absolutely Frank Frazetta. And the reason that it's Frank Frazetta, <clears throat> here's another one of Frazetta here, the Illustrated Arcanum, is because one thing I can do, Frank Frazetta can draw savage animals like nobody. He can draw action like nobody. He can evoke a mood um, on the page like no other artist can. He can take the book and he can bring it to life just like it is in your imagination. Like Conan the Sumerian here. I mean, that is the Frost Giant's Daughter. When I read the Frost Giant's Daughter, this is what I see. The action's on the page, the savagery's on the page, that tension of violence is always there and it just comes out wonderfully. And for those reasons, that's why I've got to give the nod to Frank Fazetta here as the better of the uh, of the fantasy artists. But there's a caveat. What's the caveat there, uh, uh, Grammaticus? The caveat is we've got fantasy and science fiction. So here's Frank Frazetta doing some science fiction. And, and I think Frank, Frank has some issues with science fiction. He tends to try to take his science fiction posters and turn them into a, a fantasy poster and take the technology areas of aspects of it and sort of kind of crush it into a, a fantasy motif with, with metal. And it doesn't come off quite as well. Whereas Boris, when he does his science fiction, it's the opposite. Boris isn't using the models. He's, he's unchained himself from his self-imposed prison. He's no longer has the, uh, the models shackling him and sort of confining his imagination. And now his imagination is free to go out and put onto the, onto the canvas um, everything that's coming into his mind. And I think it just releases him. And all of a sudden you've got all this creativity, you've got all this color come together. And this is just a spectacular um, science fiction cover by Boris. I love this. And most of the science fiction covers are right up here like this one right there. And I will say this about uh, Boris's fantasy as well. When all of, it, of Boris's elements, his strong elements come together, uh, he can do a, a painting that is the equal of anything of, of Frazetta's. But I think Frazetta does top him in mood and action and savagery and bringing out that element of the story and, and making it real. But I'll put, there's a, uh, I don't have a copy of it. There's a uh, painting by Boris, I think it's called The Slaver or something along those lines, where a, uh, a slaver is looking at uh, a slave to buy as a guard stands over her. And it's just superb. I think it stacks up with anything with Frazetta. <clears throat> but um, I think Frazetta is the better, in my opinion, um, overall. I'm going to give some honorable mentions out here, too. You can't talk about uh, fantasy and science fiction cover artists without mentioning Michael Whalen. That man was fantastic and prolific. You got Larry Elmore with all the Dungeons & Dragons stuff. 
And I know you're kind of we're kind of going off into the the Dungeons and Dragons rabbit hole, but Larry Elmore is a great artist too, who was really able to capture D and D. And then you got Brom, who's also another one. If you interestingly though, if you Google uh, top fantasy uh, book cover artists right now and put that into Google, what you will come back to you, what will, what your hits will be, you're not going to get any of those people. You're going to get a bunch of, and and I don't like to get negative. I don't want to get too negative. But you're going to get a lot of modern, more modern artists. And when you look at their at their work and then you compare it to these artists, when you care, compare it to Brom, Larry Elmore, uh, or God forbid, Frazetta and Boris, it just, it pales in comparison. They they don't have that same vibrancy. They don't have that same um, technique. They don't leap off of the page. They look very flat. They're not very interesting. Frankly, to me, it looks like a bunch of crap. But I'm getting into a, a subject there. I'm going off on a tangent I don't want to go off into. So these artists are great. I really love them all. They're both great, Boris and, uh, and Frazetta. But for me personally, I've got to give the nod to uh, Frazetta, especially in fantasy. But we'd love to hear what your guys' take on it is. Please put it down in the comments sections below, and I will take a read. I read all the comments, and I try to respond to all the comments. But that, I think, is going to be a wrap. So take care, be safe, and I'll catch you guys in the future.